1987. Probably 1979. So I think it was 1995. 72 or 71. In 1988. In 1984. So we've been about 2006. The fondest are the most nerve-wracking, but quite exhilarating. I just remember the poem. I mean, this is a long time ago. I remember thinking I probably had a pretty good accent and thinking back now, I'm sure it was really, really bad. <laughs> There was a language assistant and he said at the end, there's this bit when it goes, ooh, ooh, pas du tout, c'est des gilets fous. And, and he said, you have to do the wings. And we were like, no way. My mother is French and I had to practice in front of her. It was actually more daunting than doing the actually recital in front of the people. I just remember it was about a worm who had like too many legs or something. It's sort of funny and quirky. I know I did one um, about a mouse and there was another one about traffic. Okay. Which was super handy because now I know the word for congestion in French. Le petite fille se mit à écrire pour elle seule le plus beau poème. Qui a-t-il à l'intérieur du noir? Blah blah blah. Mais quand elle est ouverte, on n'a pas le temps de voir. On la croque et puis bonsoir. <laughs> I remember Dame Suritrot, Noir dans le gris du soir. Dame Suritrot, Crise dans le noir. And that's about as far as I go. Ce sont les mères des hiboux qui désiraient chercher les poux de leurs enfants, leurs petits choux, en les tenant sur les genoux. I remember that there was a poem by uh, Charles Baudelaire. There was one sentence where it had a fountain. My mother kept on saying, Well, you can't just say Gido, you must say le Gido. Le capitaine Jonathan, étant âgé de 18 ans, capture un jour un pélican. Uh, it's only now that I understand more French that I can think back about um, how crazy and weird his poems were. I received a little certificate. So that was probably the most yeah, memorable. memorable, is receiving this. So you're doing the last minute preparation, reciting your lines again under your breath, and it was quite, quite stressful actually. I got equal first prize and I won some books which I still have. <laughs> and we used to have to do Je suis tu a il a il elle a nous allons vous avez. Uh, I had a really lovely teacher, but I had no interest or thought I was terrible at the language. It was only much later in life, when I, I had a French girlfriend who eventually became my partner, uh, that I took up French again and now I actually speak it every day. My kids speak French. When I was in high school, learning French was a way of just imagining a different world. Uh, I went on to become an exchange student to cement the French that I've gathered. I travel to France regularly. I have friends who speak French. I'm a French teacher now and my students take part in the Gagnon Shed competition. I watch a lot of French television. I do enjoy French literature. It, it stays with you. It's a very beautiful language. So I did it in my final year and then it just lay stagnant. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I went to France later and it was handy. There's nothing quite like being in France and enjoying the cheese and the culture. Even just like spending time in like a really different type of countryside is really amazing. What's my score? Very well. Do I go through to the final? <laughs> <laughs> so like, we have enough? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs>